Okay. So, we will continue our previous lecture that is the properties of Riemann stasis integrals and in this lecture we will particularly deal with the step functions and we will show that uh, whenever alpha becomes a step function, alpha is taken as a step function then Riemann stress integral reduces to a either a finite sum or maybe infinite sum of the term series in the form of the series. So, one can get the value of the integral in the form of the series. Okay. Similarly, if alpha is a differentiable function, then it can be reduced Riemann stress integral reduced to a ordinary integral just a definite integrals and one can get the value easily for that. Okay. So, prior to this before starting we will give the definition of a unit step function we define the unit step function. The unit step function i is defined by i x is 0 when x is less than equal to 0 and 1 when x is greater than 0. So, basically this is entirely a line. So, i x b means when the x real number x is less than equal to 0 the corresponding value of i x will be this and when it is greater than 0 the corresponding value of i x will be uh, 1 this point is not included here, it is included here. Okay. So, this is our step function, if we call it as a unit step function. If we uh, uh, as a note, we can say if suppose I take S be any real number in the sum interval say a b and when we say x minus s, then the meaning of this is 0. If x is less than equal to s and 1 if x is greater than s. So, this will be starting if s is say positive <coughs> or maybe negative or s is negative. Suppose, I take s here then all the for all the real number which are less than or equal to x the image of uh, under i will be 0 and while it will be 1 when it is greater than this. So, this is the real line. So, this all about the step functions. Now, we will make use of this step functions and first we will show that if if our f is continuous and also alpha is a step function, then in that case the integral can be computed just by computing the value of the function at the point where the function is continuous. So, the result is this the result says if suppose s is a number lying between a and b, a b is a given interval and f is bounded over the closed interval bounded on the closed and bounded interval a b, f is also continuous, f is continuous, continuous on uh, uh, at the point at the point s which is in r lying between a and b and b and suppose alpha x is the uh, unit step function x minus s okay alpha then the result says the riemann stage integral of the function f with respect to alpha uh, from a to b over the uh, interval a b is nothing but the value of the function at a point s where it is continuous. So, that way we can easily get the value of the function uh, Riemann stress integral. If I know this property that alpha is a unit step functions with respect to say s where alpha x is i x minus h and f is bounded and continuous function defined over the interval a b. Okay. So, let us see the proof of this. In order to prove this result, uh, let us use the since f is giving to be a f is 
continuous and bounded also. So, we can uh, uh, function f over the interval a b will attend is maximum and minimum value, because the uh, interval a b is closed and function is continuous. So, it will attend is maximum and minimum value. Therefore, we can find out the maximum and minimum Riemann sum for this function f. Okay. So, let us take consider a partition. partition P having the point suppose x naught, x 1, x 2, x 3. It may be more point, but just for simplicity I am taking and the result can be extended when there are so many other points involved in between A B. Okay. Where x naught I am taking as A, which uh, A which is less than x 1 is suppose S and less than x 2 which is less than x 3 is suppose b. So, this is the interval a b. We have partitioned this interval by choosing this partition x naught, x 1, x 2, x uh, x 1, x 2 and x 3 is b. So, this is our say x 3. Okay. So, let it not be this here, this will be x 2. Clear? This will be x 2. So, x 1 is s, this is our point s, we have taken this one. Now, consider this upper sum, upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha over this partition p. So, this sum is sigma m i delta alpha i, i is 1 to 3 and that is the meaning of this is m 1 delta alpha 1 m 2 delta alpha 2, m 3 delta alpha 3 and if I further expand it delta alpha 1 means it is defined over this interval. So, the uh, choosing as uh, alpha x 1 minus alpha x naught this is our m then m 2 alpha x 2 minus alpha x 1 then plus m 3 alpha x 3 minus alpha x 2. This is by definition. Now, function since our alpha x is given to be the i x minus s is it not. So, this is the value is 0 if x is less than equal to s and 1 if x is strictly greater than s. Now, here x 1 is s. So, it means when the value of alpha at the point x 1 will be 0, value of alpha at the point x naught is 0. So, first term will be 0, the second term will be m 2, alpha of x 2 since x 2 is greater than s. So, alpha of x 2 will be 1 and then alpha of x 1 because it by definition it will be 0 and then m 3 alpha x 3 and alpha x 2 will all be 1. So, basically you are getting m 2. So, upper sum will always be m 2. Similarly, we can say the lower sum of the function f with respect to alpha will be the small m 2 like this. Okay. Now, since f is continuous, since f is continuous at s. So, it means this is our x naught, x 1 which is s, x 2, x 3 which is b. So, if I take any arbitrary point here say x, the value of a f x in this value is nothing but what? This is always uh, 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 the maximum value of this will be uh, because it is uh, m 2, m 2 is the maximum value over this interval. So, it will be the maximum value of this uh, f x will be m 2. Okay. So, it will approach to this. So, function f is continuous s therefore, limit of the function f x when x tends to s will be f s. Okay. But the function f is such f is such which is defined over this interval uh, x 1 to x 2 the function uh, f x is our alpha x into this. So, when you take the value 
the value will be m 2 and this will come out to be f of s. So, both m 2 sorry m 2 will go to f of s and m 1 similarly a small m 2 will also approach to f of s because of the continuity. So, both m 2 and cap small m 2 will go to f s and small f s uh, sorry small m 2 will also go to a small f s and because this is the largest value and smallest value, but as x approaches to s this will go to f s. So, m 2 will approach to f similarly m small m 2 will approach to f s. So, this shows that both upper sum of the function when the limiting value limiting value of the is uh, limit of this x tends to s is our m uh, f s and that is the infimum of this and which is equal to supremum of the lower sum of f with respect to alpha. So, this shows integral a to b f d alpha will be f s because always this limiting value is coming to be f s. So, upper sum when you take the infimum value it is f s when you take the supremum value of the lower sum it is also f s. So, it is integrable and integral comes out to be this. So, this proves the result. The second result also in connection with the step functions which will give the uh, uh, result that if alpha is a step function then a Riemann integrable integral uh, stage integral will be reduced to the infinite series or a finite series depending on this. So, suppose C n is greater than equal to 0 for n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on and let sigma C n 1 to infinity is convergent. Let this converges okay is convergent. Let this is convergent. The sequence S n is a sequence of distinct point. Let sequence S n be a sequence of distinct point, distinct points in the interval a b in the open interval a b and alpha x is the step function n equal to 1 to infinity this we call a step function alpha x is this a c n i uh, c n i of x minus s n let it be number 1 okay. and let f be continuous on the closed interval a b continuous on the closed interval a b then the Riemann stasis integral of the function f with respect to alpha over a b is equal to the summation of the series 1 to infinity c n f of s n. So, Riemann integral, integral can be calculated in terms of the series if alpha is giving to be a step function. So, that is very really important result we get. So, proof of this okay. first thing is that uh, since sigma of c n 1 to infinity is convergent and uh, i of x minus s n is 0 if x is less than equal to s n and 1 if x is greater than s n. So, this implies that the series 1 to infinity c n uh, c n of uh, say i of x minus s n will always be dominated by the series sigma c n 1 to infinity, because this term this will help this will reduce uh, when all the terms for all x which are less than s n the terms i of this will be 0. So, the series will have a lesser term and all the positive terms. So, it is less than equal to c n and but this is given to be convergent. So, this is going so by comparison test comparison test the series sigma 
1 to infinity C n i of x minus S n is convergent is convergent that is the first thing which you get it and convergent for every x for every x belongs to the interval say a b and here of course, we can choose the real line also there is support for every x. Okay. Now, let us take the uh, f uh, alpha what is alpha uh, alpha is given given alpha x h sigma n is 1 to infinity c n i of x minus s n. So, what is the value of this? So, if we put x equal to a uh, x line belongs to a b. So, let it be in the interval a b. Okay. So, x is suppose a then what will be the alpha a? This is our interval a b and here uh, these are the s 1 s 2 s n these are the points where s 1 s 2 s n they belongs to the open interval remember because these are the points of distinct. So, say s 1 s 2 s n and so on these are the points. So, a is strictly less than s 1 a is less than s 2 and so on. So, when a is strictly less than 2 s n for each n therefore, i of x minus s n will be 0. So, it will be 0, uh, but what is the alpha of b when you take x of b all the s n are less than equal to b are basically less than b is it not. So, it will be completely the value of this will be 1. So, what we get from here that alpha a is 0 alpha b is 1 and alpha x is an increasing function is a monotonically increasing function that alpha s 1 when you take x equal to x 1 then it is less than x equal to x 2 and so So, it is a monotonically increasing function. So, alpha is a monotonic function first thing and this is okay. and alpha b. Okay. So, what is uh, sorry this i of x n is 1. So, basically 1 into sigma uh, here I am sorry this will be uh, i of uh, you can write this thing as sigma c n 1 to infinity and this will be 1. So, you are getting sigma c n sigma c n sorry this is 1. Okay, we are getting this one. So, one thing is clear that this will be a monotonic increasing function. Monotonic increasing function. Now, let f sin l greater than 0 be given. Okay, the series since the series sigma c n 1 to infinity converges. So, the remainder term of the series is less than so we can choose. So, for given f sin l greater than 0 there exists an n such that the sum of this series n plus 1 to infinity c n will remain less than f sin l let it be because by definition of the converse the remainder term of the series is convergent. So, this is less than f sin l. Okay. Now, this will be uh, let us take put alpha 1 x be the sum of this series of first n terms c n i of x minus s n and alpha 2 x uh, I am taking the sum of this series where the terms are taken from n plus 1 onward so, of the series c n i of x minus s n. Let it be this 2. Now, since i of x minus n because of this this becomes a step function. So, sum of the step function and in case of the step function previous theorem BSA it is a Riemann integrable functions. Okay. So, the sum of this uh, Riemann integrable functions we can write the sum of the this therefore, we can say f is alpha d alpha 1 uh, sorry step function. So, integral f d alpha becomes the by the pre if alpha is a step function then integral f alpha a uh, x is nothing but the f s is it not that what we have seen. So, here so we get from there is so this implies the integral a to b f d alpha 1 
is nothing but the sigma i is equal to 1 to n 1 to n i is equal to 1 to n c n uh, i n is equal to 1 to n n equal to 1 to n c n f of s n. Okay? So, this will be the alpha 1 and this is number 1 because it will follow from the previous result. This result is there which we have proved earlier the result is this is it not according to this alpha is giving to be continuous f is continuous and this one. So, already f is continuous given and bounded and alpha x is this. So, value will be this f s. So, here if you take this sum if you take the integral of this uh, f of uh, f, f of alpha 1 x and d x then we get immediately this can be written as the sigma into this form. So, there is <coughs> nothing in to explain. Now, further what is our alpha 2 b minus alpha 2 a? Uh, what is alpha 2? The alpha 2 is defined as this this is alpha 2 x. So, if I replace x by a then alpha 2 a x will be 0 and alpha 2 b will be sigma of c n. So, basically this is equal to the sigma n plus 1 to infinity c n, but which is giving to be less than epsilon because of uh, the series is convergent. So, remainder will be less than epsilon. Hence, therefore, therefore, the integral a to b f d alpha 2 with respect to alpha 2 the modulus of this is less than or equal to a to b mod of f d alpha 2 is it not d alpha 2 or mod of d alpha 2 and then d alpha 2 again this is bounded. So, it is less than or equal to m times and m times integral a to b d alpha 2 mod of this and mod of this and this value is nothing but the alpha 2 b minus alpha a which is less than epsilon. So, this is less than m into epsilon. Okay? So, let it be the equation 2. So, over alpha 1 we are getting this thing over alpha 2 we are getting this thing. So, where m is the supremum value of the function f x over the interval a b. Okay? That is what now, since our alpha is nothing but the alpha 1 plus alpha 2, because when you take the alpha x, alpha x is the sum of this series 1 to infinity, I break up into two parts 1 to n and 2 n plus 1. So, alpha is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x. So, we get from here is then so integral a to b f d alpha minus sigma i is equal to 1 to n n is equal to 1 to n and then c n f of s n mode of this. Now, this will be this can be written as what? It is nothing but the mod integral a to b f d alpha 1 minus sigma n is 1 to n c n f of s n plus integral a to b f d alpha 2 because this d alpha is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 we can write this. Now, this part is already given to be less than epsilon this part is less than f uh, basically um, this entire thing alpha 1 is the same as this. So, this part is 0 we get this thing cancel only this part is left and this part we have shown this is less than m into epsilon. So, it is less than equal to m into epsilon, but epsilon is arbitrary. So, when as n tends to infinity epsilon will go to 0. So, epsilon will go to 0 therefore, we get integral a to b f d alpha is nothing but the sigma n is 1 to infinity c n f of s n and that is complete the results. Okay? That's result. So, this one clear. So, what this result says is that in case of the function uh, alpha is a monotonically is a step function then our Riemann state series integral reduces to an infinite series or finite sum. Okay. The next result is also interesting 
which shows the Riemann integral functions uh, integral can be calculated as if it is a definite integral under certain restriction. So, assume assume alpha increases alpha increases monotonically monotonically and alpha dash alpha dash is a Riemann integral function on is a Riemann this we say is a uh, Riemann integrable function belongs to Riemann integrable function we denoted by this ok. So, alpha dash belongs to the class of Riemann integrable function class of Riemann integral function this on a b on a b let f let f uh, be a bounded bounded real function real function defined on the closed interval a b then the result says f is in Riemann stage is integral with respect to alpha if and only if if and only if the f into alpha dash this product is Riemann integrable function it belongs to the class of Riemann integrable functions on a b and in that case and in that case in that case the integral a to b f d alpha Riemann stretch integral of the function f is the same as a to b a to b f x into alpha dash x d x as if it is just a definite integral when the function is like this Riemann ok. So, this same test let us see the proof of this. <laughs> Let f sin l greater than 0 be given, be given ok. Now, given that since alpha dash belongs to the Riemann integral functions over the interval a b. So, by definition there is a partition. So, there exist a partition or there is a partition p say x naught x 1 x 2 x n of a b such that the upper sum of the function uh, alpha dash minus lower sum of the function alpha dash with respect to the partition p is less than by necessary and sufficient condition for a function to be the Riemann integral is the difference between upper sum minus lower sum will remain less there will be a partition where the difference uh, fluctuation of the function will remain less than f sin l. this is the fluctuation of the function through ok. So, let it be 1 ok. Now, since alpha dash is giving to be since alpha dash means is a differentiable function alpha dash belongs to r belongs to r which is differentiable it belongs to r means it exists. So, it is differentiable. So, it implies that alpha is continuous alpha dash is continuous because if every continuous if the function is different it has to be continuous. So, alpha dash will be a uh, so uh, that is a continuous function alpha will be a continuous function otherwise we cannot talk about the derivative. Since alpha dash exists it means this shows or this shows that alpha is differentiable that alpha is differentiable. So, alpha must be continuous that is the main from here because this is given alpha dash alpha dash means derivative of alpha. So, this exists 
So, it must alpha must be a continuous otherwise the derivative cannot be uh, if it is discontinuous cannot be talk about the differentiability. So, alpha is continuous. So, alpha is continuous throughout the interval a b. So, this is the interval a b and partitioning we are choosing the partition say x minus 1 and x i this is the partition. So, alpha is continuous on the partition. So, alpha is continuous on the close interval x i minus 1 x i for each i. <coughs> it is differentiable on the open interval x i minus 1 x i. So, by mean value theorem Lagrange is mean value theorem we say alpha x i minus alpha x i minus 1 must be equal to the derivative of the function alpha dash at a point say t i delta x i where the t i lies between x i minus 1 to x i is it not. So, there exists a point now this may be closed also ok. So, t i will be for some there exists a some point t i where this will exist by mean value theorem. So, let it be this say number 2 ok for each i and this is 2 for each i 1 2 n 2. Now, what is given is that our uh, alpha is an increasing monotonic function alpha dash is this and f b a is bounded real function then f if only leave this ok. So, let us take the point suppose this is x i minus 1 here is x i and T i is somewhere. So, let us choose a point S i choose a point S i belongs to x i minus 1 to x i. Then uh, let us apply that uh, uh, result what this result is which we have proved earlier the result is this one uh, result says if then by the result by the theorem which we have proved earlier the theorem is what theorem is if the partition if u p alpha f alpha minus l p f alpha is less than epsilon l. If for every epsilon l there exists a partition if for every f sin l greater than 0 there exist a partition p such that this holds such that this holds 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 then and if s i and t i are arbitrary points are arbitrarily points in the interval x i minus 1 to x i then this sum sigma i is equal to 1 to n mod of f s i minus f t i into delta alpha i into delta alpha i is less than f sin l. This result we have already proved. So, using this result because our function alpha i is giving to be continuous function bounded uh, sorry is giving uh, satisfying this condition. Okay. So, for any partition p we can get this. So, what we that apply the condition alpha dash because alpha dash as a one more thing is that uh, this shows that uh, if alpha is a function f uh, must be in r if and only if. Okay. So, this shows that uh, this and this is uh, uh, f in, in r f belongs to r alpha if and only if this result is true. So, what is the alpha dash is in R, alpha dash is in R. So, we can get this result quickly. So, by the result if S i be any point of this then by this theorem, by this theorem, by the theorem stated above we get, we get immediately sigma, sigma uh, i is equal to 1 to n alpha dash s i minus alpha dash t i into delta x i is less than f sin r 
is less than epsilon and because because alpha dash is in r alpha is in r on a b this is given and that's that's why this result is valid okay so let it be condition 3 okay now since our this sum sigma i is equal to 1 to n f of s i delta alpha i this is nothing but what sigma i equal to 1 to n f of s i delta alpha i we have already proved it in the second this is our delta alpha i is it not so this delta alpha i which is equal to say delta alpha i is nothing but alpha dash t i delta x i so by using the second by using the second we can say this is equal to alpha dash alpha dash i t i delta x i by second okay then consider this sigma i is 1 to n f of s i delta alpha i minus sigma i is 1 to n f of s i alpha dash s i into delta x i okay consider this thing now we have already shown this part is it the sigma f i delta i is this thing so here is t i so what i say i subtract this thing t i and add t i so if i subtract t i and add so let it be 4 so using 4 consider this now this can be written as uh, add mod sigma i is 1 to n f of s i delta alpha i minus sigma i is 1 to n f of s i alpha i dash t i delta x i plus sigma i is 1 to n f of s i alpha i dash t i delta x i minus sigma i is 1 to n f of s i alpha dash s i delta x i just add in some. Now, this part is exactly same as this. So, this will go to 0. Now, this is there, but because of this we get the earlier one result alpha dash i minus this because of the 3. So, apply the 3 condition. So, this is less than epsilon and f is bounded. So, can you not say this is less than equal to m epsilon by third and m is supremum value of mod f x because of this. Okay? So, in particular we can say this. So, let it be. So, what we get is so, so we get basically this result sigma i is equal to 1 to n f of s i delta alpha i is less than equal to m plus f sorry m into f sin l m f sin l plus sigma i is 1 to n f of s i f of s i uh, alpha dash alpha dash uh, uh, that is what he is saying is it not f of s i f of s i alpha dash i f of dash this thing this part and f of s i you can take an outside. So, what you are getting is f of s i delta alpha i minus this part. So, minus this part is less than f final. So, this thing is this thing is less than equal to this plus this. So, f of s i alpha dash s i delta x i this is true. So, which we get from here. So, we get this thing. Now, this is true for what for every i and s. So, if I replace this by the upper sum of this. So, for all choices of s i which is in x i minus 1 to x i this result is whole. So, you take the uh, upper bound for this. So, once you take the upper bound, so that we get what this is less than equal to uh, m f sin l plus the upper bound of the function f alpha dash. 
because this is the f alpha dash function. So, replace this by its maximum value. So, you are getting the upper bound for this and which is less than equal to i is greater than equal to 1 to n f of s i delta alpha y. Now, take the upper bound for this. So, now take the upper bound left hand side take upper replace by this maximum value. So, you are getting this this is 2 for every s i. So, we get the upper bound of this f alpha is less than equal to upper bound of f alpha dash plus m f sin. Let it be say fourth question fifth. Now, in a similar way we can also use this thing. If I take this is less than f sin null, so this part is less than equal to this greater than equal to this minus f sin null. So, from similarly we can say similarly same argument we can say that upper sum of p uh, f alpha dash is less than equal to upper sum of p f alpha plus m f sin in a similar way from the same inequality. Therefore, the difference of this upper sum of p f alpha minus upper sum of p f alpha dash uh, alpha dash is less than equal to m f sin l. Okay? Clear? Now, if we take this, this is two. So, what you get? Take the inf infimum value of this. Take the infimum. So, take infimum over all the partition p. So, this will lead to the integral a to b upper sum f d alpha. This will lead to the integral a to b bar f x alpha dash x d x and this entire thing is less than or equal to m f sin l. But f sin l is arbitrary, but f sin l is arbitrary small number. So, as f sin l goes to 0, we get integral a to b bar f d alpha is nothing but the a to b upper sum of this upper sum of f x alpha dash x d x. Okay? Let us see. Similarly, for any bounded function, this is true for any bounded function. Similarly, we can prove the uh, lower integrals. Similarly, we can show. Similarly, we can show that a bar f uh, say a bar of this part that is a bar of f f d alpha is the same as a lower bar b f x alpha dash x d x. So, 8 and 7 and 8 implies if f is uh, given what is given is that function alpha dash is in this and f is given to be a Riemann stretch integral then this left hand side are equal therefore, these two are equal and we get uh, integral a to b f d alpha is the same as a to b f x f x alpha dash x d x uh, d x. Okay? So, this improves the result complete. Okay? So, this shows that remark you can say remark is that what the if so what if alpha h and integrable derivatives integrative derivatives then the integral reduce then integral reduces integral reduces to n to an ordinary Riemann integral. Hence, this can be easily computed. So, this is what we are getting. Okay. So, this almost we have completed. Now, um, we will give a slight uh, just a concept of uh, uh, what is our measure. We have discussed already earlier, already earlier. But let us see some uh, 
in uh, slightly in detail what is the major and what do you mean by the almost every real functions and like this. So, let me just say a uh, few uh, concepts set of major 0, set of major 0. set of major 0. Okay. Let us see, <coughs> uh, we define that the subset E of R, E of R real line subset E of R is said to be, is said to be of major 0. of major 0 if for each if for each epsilon greater than 0 there exist there exist a finite or countable number of number of open intervals i 1, i 2 and so on such that their countable union covers E, countable union covers E and the length of this length of i n 1 to infinity is less than epsilon where L denotes the length of the interval, length of open interval I n of R. Clear? So, what do you mean where that if suppose a subset E is there, suppose these are the points in E, these are the set E and if we are able to uh, uh, is this set E is set to be measure 0, if B encloses these points by means of an open interval I 1, I 2 say I n and so on, such that length of these open intervals is less than epsilon L, such that countable union of this covers E means all the points of E belongs to the countable union of I n, but the sum of their length cannot is not exceeding by f sin l, then we say the set E has a major 0 or is set to be of major 0. Now, um, thus what we can is say is length up to ok. And there is one result which will be used for the result says if each of the subsets each of the subsets E 1, E 2, and so on of R is of major 0, is of major 0, then their countable union, then their countable union that is union of I e n, n is 1 to infinity is also of major 0 and this is very e easy to prove uh, what suppose I fix up proof of this simple suppose I fix up f sin r greater than 0 ok. Since E n has a major 0 has major 0. So, by definition there are all the count for each n for each n belongs to say i, i is the natural number or some uh, n, uh, n natural number. Then since E n is measured, so there exist, so there exist, there exist a finite or countable or countable collections, countable number of open intervals. intervals which covers E n, which covers E n 
and whose length lengths add up is less than epsilon is length add up to less than say epsilon over 2n okay therefore the countable union un therefore countable union of en 1 to infinity is covered is covered by countable union countable union of these intervals of all such open intervals of interval whose length whose length add up to what epsilon l by 2 epsilon l um, say first term epsilon 2 square epsilon l by 2 n and so on. So, if I add this becomes less than epsilon l. So, up to less than this number. Hence, it is a okay. So, this proves as a corollary we can say every countable subset of major uh, of r has major 0 every countable subset because why the reason is suppose as e is a countable set we can arrange in the form of the sequence like this this is a countable set so each one x1 x2 xn we can enclose it by means of a countable number of n intervals and some of this will be each sum is less than epsilon so countable union of this sum will also be less than epsilon so this is counting rational numbers rational numbers forms a set of major zero because it's countable rational numbers are countable major zero so this shows this much. now this is last one which is very important almost everywhere a statement is almost almost everywhere a statement a statement is set to hold hold at almost at almost every point of the interval a b a b or almost everywhere everywhere in the open in the interval a b if the set of points set of points of a b set of points of a b at which at which the statements statements does not hold does not hold each of major 0. So, that is the definition. So, thus we say for example, if we say f is continuous f is continuous at most at almost at almost every point of the interval a b means means the same age as if e is uh, the set of points of a b set of points of a b at which f is not continuous f is not continuous then e a then E is of major 0. So, that is what is uh, f is continuous almost everywhere means. Now, based on this we have a very in result important theorem and the proof is proof is of course, we are just uh, neglecting because this proof based on already we have proved this earlier. The theorem says let f be a bounded a function bounded function on the closed 
interval close bounded interval say a b then f is Riemann integral over interval a b f is Riemann integral functions over the interval a b if and only if if and only if f is continuous f is continuous at almost every point of point in the interval a b almost every point in the interval a b then we say the function is continuous for this ok for examples let us take this function suppose i define f x at 0 and 1 when x is say uh, x is irrational and uh, x is rational and this is irrational irrational point ok this is bounded function now let us see what type of we will discuss whether question is whether f is Riemann integral functions over 0 1 or not so this question we will discuss next when you go for the tutorials okay similarly other thank you very much